Smithsonian Curious About Fossils by Kate Waters. Can you see a shape in this rock? How about that one? Whose tooth is this? All these things are fossils, and that's a T-Rex tooth. Let's find out what fossils can tell us about life on Earth. Fossils are evidence of life from the past. They give us clues about animals and plants that lived on Earth long ago. Some fossils were part of an animal or a plant. They can be bones, shells, teeth, tree trunks, and other hard parts of living things. Fossils can also be tracks and traces left by animals. Other fossils are like a mold. The object has decayed, but its shape remains. Sometimes animals are trapped in tree resin. It hardens around them. Even a tree can harden into rock. And looking at the pictures, we have a skeleton of a pterodactylus aliens, Albertosaurus bones, and Edmontosaurus skull. We have a mold fossil, insects and resin, and tree fossil or petrified wood. It takes many thousands of years for a fossil to form. When a plant or animal dies on land or in water, sediment slowly covers it. Sediment can be sand, mud, silt, or clay. Sediment builds up on top of the animal or plant, plant remains. It gets heavier and heavier. The layer below where the animal or plant came to rest turns to rock. Either the hard part of the plant or animal or its shape is now captured in the rock. After many years, the layers of sediment slowly erode. Fossils appear. An earthquake can also expose fossils. So can construction work on buildings and tunnels. We have a picture of where the sediment builds up. And then in the upper right hand corner, you have rock layers in Texas. And then the lower right hand corner shows marine animal fossils in a desert in Chile, South America. Fossils help tell about creatures that lived long ago, and that can mean big discoveries. In the 19th century, most people did not know dinosaurs had once existed. Mary Anning lived in England then. She was a curious girl from a poor family. Mary looked for things along the seashore that she could sell. She picked up shells and colorful pebbles and rocks with shapes in them. If Mary saw something interesting in a rock, she carefully chipped it out with a hammer. At the time, all these finds were called curiosities. On the left-hand side, you'll notice a letter and drawing by Mary about a plesiosaur. And there is a picture of Mary Anning. She was born in 1799 and lived until 1847. Scientists came to the Anning family shop to buy Mary's curiosities. From them, she learned about ancient animals and plants. Mary discovered several new kinds of prehistoric animals including the first pterosaur ever found in England. Mary's brother Joseph found a huge skull. Together they dug out the rest of the skeleton of an ichthyosaur. And we have Plesiosaurus macrocephalus fossil and ichthyosaurus fossil on the, um, the lower right hand um, side. Mary Anning looked at shapes to identify animals that lived long ago. In France, Georges Cuvier looked at fossils and compared them to animals that lived in his day. He looked for what was the same and what was different. We have Cuvier's drawings of sloth fossils found in South America, where they helped prove species because could become extinct. And there is a picture of him um, right above in the upper left hand side. And he lived from 1769 until 1832. Cuvier thought that some creatures must have disappeared or become extinct 
he had discovered a skeleton of a mosasaur, a swimming reptile. He knew creatures like it were no longer alive anywhere. Cuvier believed a huge disaster must have happened on Earth to destroy living things like the mosasaurs. This was the first time that people considered extinction. And you will notice the fossils of mosasaur skeleton along with the skull and teeth. Richard Owen, who lived from 1804 until 1892, is shown next to the skeleton of Dinornis, the moa. The word dinosaur was introduced by an English scientist, Sir Richard Owen. It means fearfully great, a lizard. Later, people realized that dinosaurs are not lizards. Owen studied to be a medical doctor, but became interested in animals. When an animal died at the London Zoo, he was allowed to take it apart and study it. Owen used what he learned to look at fossils of bones and teeth from animals that lived long ago. This helped him imagine what those animals might have looked like. Owen worked with an English sculptor, Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. They built the first live life-size dinosaur models. And there is a picture of Owen Hawkins dinosaur models at the Crystal Palace in London. And this picture is from 1854. Directly below that, it shows a hadrosaur model by Hawkins. And the dates for this show 1807 through 1894. More and more fossil discoveries were made from the mid 1800s on. In New York, Othniel Charles Marsh collected rocks and trilobites when he was a boy. Ancient birds became his special interest. Marsh developed the idea that prehistoric birds such as Ichthyornis and Hesperornis were descended from dinosaurs. Today, his theory is considered fact. You'll notice the crocodile fossils found by Othniel Charles Marsh, 1831 to 1899 shown. Barnum, Mr. Bones Brown, hunted fossils for the American Museum of Natural History in New York. He found hundreds, including the very first Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton. There is a picture of Barnum Brown from 1873 to 1963. And in the middle of the page, you'll notice the drawing of T-Rex, the skeleton. And um, in, the up, in the lower right-hand corner, the picture is of Hesperonis skeleton. Charles Doolittle Walcott also grew up in New York and was a fossil collector when he was young. Later, Walcott found the famous fossil location in the Canadian Rockies called the Burgess Shale. Shale is a kind of rock. Walcott used dynamite to blast the rock apart. He mapped what fossils were found in the different rock layers. And uh, a picture below shows Charles Walcott from 1850 to 1927 at the Burgess Shale. And there are some additional pictures on the right-hand side, some of Walcott's finds from the Burgess Shale, and then a picture of his field diary. Charles Walcott was a paleobiologist. The scientific study of life on our planet using fossils as clues is called paleontology. Paleo means ancient. Paleobiologists study ancient life forms or organisms. They usually work with animals. Paleobotanists study ancient plants, flowers, and trees. Some fossils are so tiny that they can only be studied using microscopes by micropaleontologists. And there is a picture to the left 
using microscopes at Smithsonian's Fossil Lab. Directly above this paragraph, you'll see paleobotanists and a fossil find. And to the right, there are pictures showing 20th and 21st century paleontologists at work. Like all scientists, paleontologists look for answers to questions such as, what happened to the dinosaurs? How do we know? In the 1970s, Luis Alvarez, an American physicist, became interested in these questions. Fossil evidence showed that large dinosaurs once roamed the earth. Then about 66 million years ago, they disappeared. Alvarez worked with his son to find out why. Their theory was that a comet or asteroid struck Earth. This caused enormous cloud of dust to block the sun rays from reaching Earth. Plants died and so did the dinosaurs that ate them and the meat-eating dinosaurs that ate them. Most scientists today accept the Alvarez's asteroid extinction theory. To the left, the caption next to this picture says, we now know that an asteroid, not a comet, like the one shown here, hit the Earth. But in science, more answers means more questions. Matthew Carano is a research scientist who works at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. He studies how life evolved before and after the mass extinction. The Smithsonian's Anna K. Behrensmeyer looks at what happens when a living thing dies. She researches why some living things become fossils and some don't. The picture um, directly above shows Matthew Carano with Triceratops fossils and then to the right of that, Anna K. Benrins Meyer's field notebook, and then her at work. Dong Ziming, a paleontologist in China, is interested in what was living on our planet 170 million years ago. Not much is known about this period of time yet. Ziming discovered a place in Northwest China that has hundreds of fossils. Some had never been seen before. He has named more than 20 animals, including the one shown here. Shunosaurus used the bony club on the end of its tail to bash its enemies. Gassosaurus is the picture shown um, directly above this paragraph and Shunosaurus is directly below. And to the right, we have Yang Chuanosaurus. Paleontologists often travel by plane or jeep to remote places searching for fossils. This picture shows a Smithsonian dinosaur expedition in Shell, Wyoming. When they find a good spot, the lead scientists must get permission to dig on the land. Then they must raise money for equipment, food, and shelter for the dig crew. A dig crew is made up of scientists and students. Sometimes people volunteer to help, but they have to be ready to camp. And the pictures to the right show um, people working at a dig site. Today, paleontologists use computers in their work, but they also use many of the same tools that early fossil hunters did including stone hammers and brushes. If a dig crew finds a large fossil, paleontologists may use a drill or a pickaxe and chisel to carefully separate the fossil from a larger rock. They make detailed drawings of what the fossil looks like in the rock. That way, they know the original location of all the fossil parts. Then, very slowly, they begin to chip away at the rock surrounding the fossil. When most of the rock is gone, they use small picks, brushes, and even toothbrushes to remove the dust and rock bits. 
photographs are taken at every stage. When the fossil has been safely removed, it is packed up carefully. It will be sent to a university or museum for further study. Hopefully, a truck can make it to the dig site. If not, then the fossil crates are pushed and pulled on sleds until they can be more easily transported. Whole fossil skeletons are rarely found. Most fossils are bits and pieces that have to be put together like a puzzle. But each small bit is saved. It might be the missing piece of a bigger skeleton already discovered. The pictures below show preparation tools, wrapping up a fossil, and a fossil field jacket. To the right, we have bits of stegosaurus bone. Here are some interesting fossils that have been unearthed. We have a starfish, mammoth hair, allosaurus claw, allosaurus foot, ammonites, which are extinct marine animals, T-Rex skull, giant sloth poop, I know, gross, dinosaur eggs, very interesting. And here is the glossary. Decayed means broken down over time and fallen apart. Expose is to show something that was covered up. Extinct is when an entire species disappears from the earth. Extinction, an event when all of one type of living thing dies off. Marine, having to do with the sea or ocean. Organism, a life form. Paleontology, the study of life on earth using fossils. Petrified wood, dead wood that has turned into stone. Resin, a liquid found in some trees and plants. Sediment, sand, mud, silt, or clay. Theory, ideas about how something works based on testing and proving those ideas.